Hey, Backlog Kids, and today we're going to take a look at two mobile suits again, but this time they come in the same box. Introducing the HGAC 1144th scale by 8 and Mercurius from New Mobile Report Gundam Wing. These mobile suits in universe are designed to be a team, as one would serve as the glass cannon, while the other would be the defense unit of the team. Which is why I think Bandai bundled them in a twin pack. Now, this is a P Bandai exclusive, so it'll be on the pricey side, especially when you're outside of Japan. But will it be worth it to pick one up? Let's find out. So looking at the box, you'll see it's your typical P Bandai monochrome box art. The kits are gonna be rendered there in the right and some CG action going on the left. Nothing to see at the sides as is typical for the box of a P Bandai kit. You know, sometimes I ask myself, since it's premium, shouldn't it have a premium feeling box? Then again, it might just be referring to the premium membership. Anyway. The manual will be straight to the point with no cover art or info about the kit or the mobile suits. You can see there that this kit will have a lot of duplicate runners as it is essentially the same kits in different colors. Total runners being 20 with one PVC wire 4x8. Aside from the instructions to build these kits, there will be a color guide on the end of the manual. Oh and list price is 4180 yen. Very pricey indeed, but you are paying for two kits, which honestly isn't that bad. Now onto the kits themselves. Here they are back to back without their loadouts. As you can see, they are nearly identical except obviously for the color scheme and the antennas. The Mercurius will have a double antenna while the Vi8 has a single fin. For the color scheme, the Mercurius will be having that red and pink combination while Vi8 will be having that blue and light blue combo. I've gotta admit, the vibrant color schemes for both kits does make it look more toy-like than a model kit. So I recommend putting on a top coat to remove the plasticky finish. Looking at the proportions, they do look stubby with a short and wide torso and the longer legs with the thick thighs. So with the long legs, you could probably guess that this is a Hajime Katoki design. Given the weird proportions, it does really work for these guys and it gives them a very unique look that sets them apart from most mobile suit designs. It has a certain charm to it. In terms of color accuracy, these kits will be pretty accurate given that they do have a simple color scheme. A sticker sheet is included in the box, but they are mostly for the accessories, which we'll take a look at later in the video. The only part of the main kit that needs painting would be the thruster bells on the ties, but it's barely visible anyway. As for the seams, you are gonna have some, but nothing horrible. The most noticeable ones would be on the shoulder armor and along the top of the torso. And the rest would be barely visible or are disguised as panel lines. Overall, it's what you would expect with a modern high grade, and design-wise, it stays true to its source material. People who love them in the series would love them in kit form. On to the accessories. You'll see the Vi8 and Mercurius will have different loadouts. But before we get to their weapons, let's check out these alternate headpieces that you can swap with the default ones. Removing the default headpiece, they'll expose the eye sensors of the mobile suits which reminds me of a Leo's face. You'll need to put a sticker on the rim for both of these though, as it didn't receive the same color separation treatment as the default piece. Personally, I'll keep the default faces on as these do look kinda goofy. 
These kits also come with an optional open hand, but Bandai cheaped out and gave us only the left hand, and it doesn't even have its own cover. Now let's move on to the chunk of the accessories, starting with V8's loadout. As you can see, the V8 being the glass cannon of the duo, is equipped with the beam cannon and generator combo. This beam cannon supposedly rivals the firepower of the Wing Gundam's Buster Rifle, but with an almost unlimited ammo. This is due to the large energy collector on its back. When not in combat, the cannon is mounted at the back, as seen here. And to have him wield this big boy, there is a bit of fiddling you'll need to do. First, you extend the subarm entirely, then move the cannon to the front, twist the handguard, then position the cannon near the right hand. Move the grip out to slot in the hand, make sure you tuck the end beneath the arm, then grab this block from the generator and plug it in in the cannon. Now, there is supposed to be a flexible wire that connects the block to the generator, but somebody lost it. A good replacement is a copper wire you can grab from your favorite electronics store. But we ran out, so just imagine there's a wire there somewhere. Looking at it design-wise, it is pretty simple looking, and it does have some parts that came out kinda plain, as there are no details to break them up. Unfortunately, this will have a noticeable seam on the tip of the barrel and along the other end of the cannon. You'll also need to apply some stickers at the crevices here and the sensor for the cannon. Let's now take a look at the giant donut at the back which is the generator and you'll see it's nicely detailed. I particularly like the hazard simple design in the center, especially when it opens up. Pretty neat. It is attached through another subarm at the back that does have some nice articulation. You'll need to apply some stickers on the lid and on the plates inside though, as this is all built with gray plastic. So yeah, that's about it for the V8. Next, we'll take a look at Mercurius loadout, which is comprised of the beam gun, crash shield, and the planet defensors. Compared to the V8, the Mercurius has a shorter range and lower firepower loadout, as this guy's job is to defend rather than attack. Looking at the beam gun, and it is just that, a gun. It has a seam running through it, as it is just two plastic pieces sandwiched together. But it is a pistol, which is always cool in my book. Next, we take a look at the crash shield, which looks to be a buckler due to its small round shape. It's a handheld shield as opposed to the regular forearm mounted one, and can mount a beam saber peg part. Talk about defense being the best offense. Speaking of defense, let's now take a look at the planet defensors. So these little discs fly out and can produce electromagnetic fields that can defend against almost any attack. Even the twin buster rifles from the Wing Gundam Zero. Those things destroy colonies and these little guys just block them. Anyway, they can be separated individually and one connection point does have a bit of articulation. Each one of these discs do have a 3mm hole and can be mounted to the included base. So these bases are the ones that come with the 30 minute mission effect parts but they also include special adapters to mount 5 discs on each stand. For someone who enjoys posing kits, this is a really fantastic addition, as you are able to display the kit with the planet defensors deployed. Thank you Bandai. They do get stickers by the way, for the center of each disc. Fun fact, the V8 and Mercurius were inspired by the twin deities, Raijin and Fujin, which you can clearly see in the Mercurius with the planet defensors resembling Raijin's taiko drums, and the V8's generator resembling the bag of air Fujin carries. Think. So, overall these guys have a nice amount of accessories and the included bases for the planet defensors are just just ship's kiss. They will need a bit of stickers though, but honestly, they look fine without them. Now time for some articulations, starting with the head, 
it is on the ball joint and can spin 360 degrees no problem. Neck will have a tilt and can go that high and go that low. Torso has two ball joints so it can crunch a bit and some side to side action. Torso rotation will be hindered by the back skirt so careful not to break anything when rotating. The shoulders can move forward and is on a ball joint. The arm does like to pop out from time to time as there is not much clearance on the ball joint. Shoulder armor can move like so. Arms can go all the way up to there. Honestly not much. Bicep swivel over here. Then a single joint elbow with an okay bend. The hand is on the ball joint. Front skirt is on the ball joint too but could barely move. Same story for the side skirts but with a bit of more movement. Legs can kick forward but are hindered by the skirt and not much range on the back either. It can be pulled down for a bit more range but nothing to write home about. Thighs can swivel but the thick thighs will be hindering it. The thigh does have a ball joint like the spinacho which we reviewed previously to help a bit in articulation. Thigh armors will prevent it from doing the splits but it is possible if you orient the legs this way. Double joint in knee but can only go this far. Ball joint on the ankle with a bit of bend and the foot does have a ball joint on its own that makes it look like he's wearing slippers. So yeah, articulation won't be its strongest feature. The design of the suits will be hindering it from posing like a Jojo character but that doesn't mean it's not poseable. You can still get great poses out of these guys. It won't beat the spinacho but it won't feel like an old kit at all. A nice middle ground. Size comparison time and as you can see, they are smaller than your average Gundam as they are from the After Colony universe where almost all the mobile suits are a little under 18 meters. Here they are side to side with the wing zero and as you can see, they are roughly the same height. I was kinda expecting them to be a bit taller given their chunky builds, but I guess looks can be deceiving. Here they are next to the narrative and to no one's surprise, they look pretty small compared to it. Maybe we ought to review someone bigger than the narrative next time. Anyway, they're small but chunky boys. So overall, these kits are gonna be a great addition for Gundam Wing fans. The design is faithful to the anime with its very unique proportions compared to most kits out there. They both sport a unique loadout in contrast to the average rifle and shield that other kits have and comes with some nice base parts for the planet defensors. Although, they do have their fair share of cons like the vibrant color scheme making them look like toys and the limited articulation. Not to mention they are P Bandai so prices may go steep. But if you can find one at a decent price, I definitely would recommend them as they are just fun kits and they look so nice posing together. Glad Bandai put them on a twin pack as it will definitely feel incomplete without the other. So that's it for the review. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and if you didn't, give it a down and let us know why in the comment section below. Consider subscribing if you like what we do and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you won't miss a video. Join us again next time for another Backlog Kids Review.